Finally. I'm waiting for the red to pop up. It ain't popped up yet. There, there we, we go. go. Hello everybody, it's Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. Now we're going to be a little bit, we're not sure. Uh, we may be uh, on the opposite sides because we're in a different room. We're not in the studio room. And Danny's sitting on the side that he... Yeah, what is that? Yes, I don't know what you did. Hold on. Where did it go? I don't, hold on. Let me fix this boo-boo. Uh, there's yeah. no chat. Oh, it's coming. Give it time. It's slow stuff, there. man. Good Lord. Put OBS up. This is just ridiculous. <sighs> All right, so well, as I was saying, I'm not sure if y'all are going to see us on the wrong sides or not because <sighs> I'm sitting on the side I usually sit on and Danny's sitting on the side he usually sits on. But when we look at us, we look like we're on mirrored. different sides. We're mirrored in here. And I don't know how to fix it. Well, Danny's kin to Lippy is why he messes up. <laughs> Hey! I'm sorry if we're backwards. I can't. It help might it. be. It might be true. So. It might be true. Well, uh, wait, y'all are on the right side. I'm good now. Thank you. Okay, so we're okay. okay. As long as we're okay. Well, for us, it's backwards. Yeah, for uh, us, looking at it is totally backwards. So I, I told him he couldn't mess with his mind up. He had to fix it. He don't know what. He don't know how okay. to fix it. Uh. How is the razzmatazz plant coming along? It's just sitting there. It's really not growing a lot. We're fixing to uh, do some really good cleanup, build a arbor and stuff, but it's not... Well, right now, the big hole up here is we got watermelons planted up there, and the yeah. watermelon vines are growing all over the place, and we got nice watermelons, but they just don't seem to want to get ready. And we've already took two, and they weren't ready. So we're sitting back going, okay, we're not taking the next ones because we only got a few on the vine and we're really wanting our yellow needed watermelon. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Any general advice for planting and growing and protecting organic corn from a starter to finish, please. <laughs> so we're going to talk about corn. Bone sauce. <laughs> That's all I can say is bone sauce. Okay. So we're going to talk about corn because it's been kind of a corny day. I just, I couldn't help that. It has been a corny day. So you've been cutting down stalks. I've been cutting stalks of corn down, grinding them up with my chipper shredder, blowing them in the front garden because next year we're going to be planting corn up there and I'm putting corn back into the soil now. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk about that in the new uh series you are working on yes. with the um with the organic gardening we're going to be talking cheap, about that cheap way to make fertilizers and, and, and all this stuff the, yeah the, well the, the economical way i'm not going to say everything's going to be cheap because with the inflation hitting like it is everything everything's, everything's going to be expensive <laughs> now it's one thing that's kind of pissing me off is the fact that everything it doesn't matter what you buy now it's expensive oh yeah it doesn't matter it can be the cheapest of cheap stuff I bought a feed drum the other day, $30 for a metal feed drum. I was like, what? And it didn't have a lid. And it didn't even have a lid on it. I had to get the man to go out and hunt a lid. He finally found a lid. And I said, well, I need the ring to go on top of the lid. And he brought me one that's a, you got to put a bolt in it and stuff. I mean, I was like, man, I don't know about this. You know I mean? The plastic ones you can get, but the plastic lids split. They stay out in the sun. They're no good. So. Hey, Sharon. Yeah, okay, so Sharon Hardzog is in the uh, chat tonight, and uh, over on Crazy Days, I started a series on uh, conversations of friends. So as people come by, or if I can figure out how to do it online somewhere and put together a video, uh, I'm talking to some of my friends, and I'm just throwing it up, just some of our conversations, and I started by telling my story, and... A lot of people have been asking about my story. So I sat down one day this week just out of the blue and decided, hey, I can do this. And then I had already had Sharon and uh, Renata's story, and I started editing them. And um, Sharon's story's up today. So my story's up, Sharon's story's up, 
Renatas will be up like Monday or Tuesday of next week. Probably Monday. And uh, so y'all go over and go to Crazy Days. Mm. Sinclair, Sinclair said in one night, deer got all my Danny corn except four stalks. Wow. Okay, somebody wants to know about bone sauce. You need to explain. Bone no, sauce. He did say he was out right at temporary. Okay, bone sauce home. comes from Permapasture Farms. Mr. Billy makes it. It's a long, extensive process to make this. Um, and it can be thinned down, even though I don't recommend it. Uh, Billy don't recommend it either. And it's, it's a little bit pricey, but it has to be because it's so hard to make it. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll tell, I'll, I'll, I know this for a fact. We put it out. The deer were coming every night mowing our sweet potatoes down. We put it out, and there has not been another deer in the garden. Yeah. So. Well, we had somebody saying something kind of ugly, but our uh, you gonna moderators have a, got it. You've always got to um, deal with you. So deal with this you. sauce that Billy makes... It's working. It's uh, working. We had deer out here every night in our sweep to every night. Every night. They had mowed them down. We have video. We showed you mowed down. And we turned around and he sent us some the next week. We put it out. Then them deer walk by the fence. They're setting our monitors off. They're walking by the fence, but they don't jump the fence. They don't come in there. So we're, we're pretty excited. We're excited about that. I mean, our sweet potatoes right now have completely covered the ground everywhere, climbing up the fences. I mean, they're... I dug two plants today. Uh, yeah, Miss Wanda did. I mean, that was on the back hill. She went back and dug well, two plants. They ate all those, too. Yeah. So we we put some back there. So we've added it in the back and the front. And uh, I dug two plants. I got enough potatoes from two plants that I made his dessert, which is a uh, eight... But, Eight by eight or a nine by nine pan of uh, sweet potatoes, something yeah, like that. Yeah, probably nine by nine or thirteen by thirteen, something. No, it ain't thirteen. Nine by nine. Nine by nine. Okay. Nine by nine. Okay, and then I had enough of the little T ninety ones that we made stir fry, and Danny, that was good, wasn't it? It was good. We the cows will no longer be getting any potatoes. Nope. All the little the little T ninety ones, I just peeled them and sliced them in half and made stir fry and. It was amazing. And then I have enough. I think I have three potatoes left. Yep. So tomorrow I'm making sweet potato fries. Maybe do a video if I can think about it. But um, um, they want to know how do you apply bone sauce? Well, Miss Wanda just puts it out. We use a paint paddle. Uh, just take and you take that paint paddle and you just uh, dip it down in it and you just take it along and just smear it on the fence posts. I mean, it's really, really simple. Uh, they took his... They took his uh, comment out. Well, he no, may how... have been the one that was being noticed. No, he wasn't the one. It was the okay. other one. Uh, he was really, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't trying to be bad. He was just asking, how do you apply it? And uh, so it, it uh, definitely has worked. There's one that just goes along the pink ribbon, and she takes a little paint towel and smears it on the pink ribbon, puts it on the fence posts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you this. She put it out about three or four days ago. I had to take that pink ribbon down today, and that stuff is slicky, and it is messy. It got on my <laughs> hands. I couldn't hold on to nothing. Um, it was just horrible. It, ha it's, it smells, but it doesn't smell horrible. Uh, it has a charred smell. It's got like a burnt charred smell, yeah. It's more to me. Now, um, it smells, but it's not overpowering but it's enough the deer smell it and they won't come near it for whatever reason i don't know what's in it but it works or it worked for us and we did put up pink ribbon and we tried to put up barriers and we did all that before we had the sauce and yeah. they went through under the ribbons through the the so they squeezed we into places it was only 10 inches wide yeah. they squeezed their bodies between that to go between it and get in there because we had deer tracks everywhere and so it works might be a little pricey but it works it, it's well worth it um so you got your corn stalks done this morning we got some of them done i, I wanna, still um, uh, i still got a bunch to go all right let me see if i can get it you, you ain't got where i can get my setup here i gotta move what are you trying to do 
I got it. If I'm gonna do pictures, I got to show them something. Oh, I, I didn't know you had pictures on here tonight. Uh, you got to click on the aisle. Right here. Anybody know what that is? Y'all know what this is? I'm gonna give you a few minutes. I'm gonna give you a few minutes here to come up with that and see if any of you can figure out what that is. Um, this is Danny's new toy. He's been wanting one for two or three years, and I talked him into a grain uh, to a what was that thing I I didn't like. Oh, well, I knew already. Uh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, I didn't like it, and we get, we sold it for about half price one day. Uh, my fingerlings in the green stalk made but not fantastic. All right, this is what it looks like once he got it put together. Somebody said a pressure washer, a fertilized sprayer. Looks like a carpet cleaner. A carpet cleaner. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's sitting upright now. This what is the way it stands. It, it's a unit. What do we do with it? A grinder. Finally. Help a bone saw sprayer. <laughs> <laughs> it's Healthy. a meal. Ms. Allison, Ms. Allison, uh, how about Healthy disrespect uh, got it as a grinder. It is a grinder, but... Uh, let me get us back. All right. But it's a grain meal is we'll what it is. We'll pictures later, but I wanted to show that. That came in this afternoon. We've been waiting. It was supposed to have been here three days ago. Yeah, we've been waiting on it for days. And, uh, then it, we got an email saying it was delayed. Then yesterday it was supposed to come. It was delayed till today. And we waited and waited and waited. And it came, what, 4 o'clock this afternoon? Late this evening, yeah. Way late. Uh, somebody was know how do you take the corn off the cob? We have a corn sheller. This thing does not do that. This only no. grinds the corn. Uh, when I bought it, I went ahead and bought four screens to go with it for four different uh, I can I can grind my animal feed with it. I can grind uh, oats, wheat, rye, barley, corn. We can make uh, grits. We can make grits, cornmeal, corn flour. Uh, we can make bean flour. Bean, yeah, we can make bean flour, rice flour. You can make anything like that you want out of it. Does the bone sauce work for raccoons? I think it works for everything because we ain't had nothing back in the garden. Yeah. Not even a rabbit. No. Um, so the grinder came, and we're planning on making doing a video um, soon, showing grinding the corn. You, you were. Yeah, we we harvested some of our uh, hickory king corn. We're going to be. Uh, of course, we got to get save out what we want for seeds. We're gonna go through and get the bad kernels out of all of it, and feed them to the chickens, and then we'll take the rest of it, and we're gonna. Be very selective about picking through it and getting what we want for um, for our cornmeal and our grits. Okay, so you see, I've I've never actually we're too far away. That's what it is. Yeah, are we? Yeah, um, I've never uh, I've never actually made uh, grits or cornmeal from Hickory King. I've always used my Danny corn. And I don't know how this is going to work They're wanting out. to know where you got the grinder. It came from Premier One. Premier One. And we bought it for all you sad people out there that think we get everything gave to us. No, we did not. We had we, to buy it. We had to buy it. And I could have called Premier and they probably would have given it to me. But uh, I didn't do it. We bought it. We bought it. We paid for it with our own. You getting off. With our own hard-earned money. Yeah. So don't cry. Don't cry. <laughs> I know there's some little penny wasters out there that's going to cry about it, but you know. But we bought it. We bought it. And we're going to see how it works. Um, there was something else about Oh, it is electric. Yes, it's electric. We don't hand, we've got a hand deal. We've got the hand, but we're too old. My shoulders, I got torn rotator cups and all. I can't sit here and do this thing no more. Did this Jan send me this shirt? I think so. I got your shirt on, Miss Jan. I think so. One of my favorite shirts. All right, somebody said they made some biscuits. They were delicious. I, oh, I, I said that get, way a while ago. Okay, thank you. Out of my cookbook. And then somebody asked something else, and I forgot what it was. Let's see, Cedar Creek Homestead popped in. <gasps> Hello. It must be Miss Josie. Probably. Okay. Uh, so now I'm trying to think. There's two different types of corn. Some people don't know that. Oh, there's flint and dent. 
the dent corner is real easy to uh, to identify the uh, the. Well, I was thinking sweet and filled. <laughs> oh well, it's flat and dent. The dent. And there is two types of other corners. There's uh, there's sweet corn and there's field corn. That's where I was going to okay. explain the difference between sweet and the flint and dent. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the flint and dent, there's a lot of difference in that is making flour and cornmeal and stuff. I mean, and, and Okay, we can get into that, but explain the difference between sweet and Yeah, milk. now the thing about it is, <laughs> sweet corn and field corn are totally different. Most people will think that they're the same. They're not. Uh, field corn is where you get your uh, grits or polenta for Mrs. Uh, Thank you, Sheena. Okay, uh, for Ms. Jan up north, they call it polenta. Right, and for all of our northern friends in the United States, it's called polenta. Uh, you can use your uh, dent corn. makes really good uh, grits, cornmeal, corn flour, stuff of that nature. Flint corn is extremely hard and makes good ground up into animal feed and stuff. All right, Nadia asked a while ago, this is what I was thinking, uh, the best book to purchase to learn about different kinds of herbs. Uh, I have a supply of herb books, and I, we have some videos that will list those books. Um, I can't remember titles right now, but if you'll type in herbs or herb books and Deep South Homestead or herb, or herb books and Crazy Days on one of the two channels, it should bring up the book reviews we've done, and I've done several on herb books that I think are really good. Nikki Shelby says, Danny, why did our corn only get about three feet high and very little corn? Uh, it was probably more than likely a nutritional issue. Uh, corn is a very heavy nitrogen feeder. You just about cannot do organic gardening and do corn. I mean, unless you're doing just a really tiny spot. If you do a whole field like we do, I mean, it takes a ton of nitrogen. And you've got to have that pH in the soil just right because if it's not, it's not going to work. Okay, so we got to say happy birthday to a couple of people. Abama Gardner. Yeah, Abama is 60. You're actually older than I am. I won't be 60. <sighs> not me, One though. more month. And we're going to say happy birthday to my mom. Oh, yeah. Wanda's mom turned My mom uh, turned 80, 80 years old today. today. I won't never and see 80. Thank you. One month Lord. later, September 21st, is my birthday, and I will turn 60. So I have one month. So Abama, happy birthday. And uh, Mom, happy birthday. But Abama, you're one month older than me. I have to And write. hello <laughs> and happy birthday is all I can say. Uh, let me put up my herbal information. So a uh, link to a video. So. Somebody put up the Bravo and how much it cost. Okay. So it wasn't that expensive. No, not I mean, really. Not because... con considering... I looked at a lot of the other grain grinders that were made in Montana and all these different things. They're talking about two thousand dollars. I was like, no, well, I'm not going to. I'm not buying something for two thousand dollars. The one I got was the Wonder Meal. Oh, well, we I sold paid. that thing immediately. Yeah, thank you, Backwoods. Um, the Wonder Meal I bought, and we paid three hundred or something for it, right? If yeah, I remember we correctly, paid, we, paid, we paid around three hundred. We paid around three hundred about four years ago. We put some corn in there, and it shot cornmeal everywhere. I mean, I, my whole kitchen was covered in it. And I had, I took it apart. I looked at everything. I had everything done right. We put it back together. I tried it one more time, and it shot meal everywhere. And I said, forget it. The dust just kept coming out of it, getting on everything. Everywhere. I mean, it yeah. covered my kitchen. You had to clean it up. And yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. We ain't playing this game. So it went away. Yeah, um, it's uh, Ms. Uh, I think Allison it was, I, said I'm way exactly one month older than her, so her birthday is October 21st. <laughs> there is that Bravo was $566 when we got it. I don't remember how much we paid for it. That sounds about right, which is not that expensive for a grain grinder. Yeah. Grain mills are so expensive. I mean, I looked at them. Most of them were way over a thousand dollars. And some of them up to two thousand. Some of some. Well, the, the one I looked at from Montana. That's the one he was wanting. That's the could. one I wanted. And I looked at it. I'm told one. I said, "Man, it's all cast iron, stainless steel, and all." But that thing was in the thousands. And I'm like, then I looked at hammer mills to go on the PTO on my tractor, and they were in the multiple thousands, up to ten thousand. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. 
Not doing that. Not a real farm gets her freeze dryer in a couple of days. Now, we hadn't been using ours the last month. I've been doing a lot of canning, and I ain't had time to deal with it. So, we'll be back to freeze drying some stuff. I got some stuff getting ready, and then we'll start again. Uh, Amy once said, do you have to consider the amount of dust coming from a meal that large? Uh, this one will do a bushel of corn in less than just a few minutes. And the thing about it is, it has all these dust protectors in it that keeps the dust from coming out. And as soon as you take the bucket out from under, it automatically locks and closes it. I mean, which is nice. But it'll be done outside in the canning kitchen, just saying. <laughs> right? Uh, That's what we're uh, doing. Yeah. We're not doing it in the house. Yeah, one thing you have to worry about now, when you're saving your own corn is alpha toxin poisoning. I mean, that's one thing that we look at pretty seriously here is uh, making sure that we don't see any alpha toxin poisoning on our corn. Uh, we make sure our ears are perfectly dry, good, clean ears and don't have any sign of that. Yeah, a lot of the grain mills will only grind everything but corn. It, yeah, because corn's extremely hard. They'll do uh, oats and wheat and barley and rye, a lot of that stuff. But not corn. But Corn's not corn. Tough. What kind of freeze dryer do we use? We have a harvest right. There's only one that you can purchase for home use, I think, and that's a harvest right. I think somebody's coming out with a different well, one. They are making a different one right they, now. They just started, and so yeah. you, I don't know. But harvest right's the one we have. Yeah, Janet, it's been too hot here to freeze dry, too. I mean, we don't even try. Well, the humidity's back and forth, too. Um, you're trying to take all the moisture out of something, and if it's rainy or it looks, we have a day that's going to be cloudy and overcast with moisture everywhere. I can't take anything out of a freeze dryer because just taking it out, trying to put it into a bag, it gets moisture. Uh, I've had some of my stuff popping from the time I get, get it out to get it in a bag. It's already popping with absorbing moisture, and that's crazy. You'll see the uh, alpha toxin on the corn. It'll look like a a dark, uh, it's kind of like a moldish look. It'll be kind of dark down between the kernels of the corn and stuff like that. You just want to make sure you stay away from that. You're really not supposed to give it to your animals. Okay, is there such a thing as organic corn? I thought most of it was GMO. Oh, yeah. Now, all the corn I grow here is organic. We don't do any GMOs. As a matter of fact, you can't buy GMO corn. And now, your corn, if you plant heirloom corn, can be cross-pollinated with GMO, and but... You can't, you can't even buy GMO corn unless you have a license to buy it. Deer corn is field corn, yes. Yes, deer corn is field corn, and deer corn is GMO. Let me tell you that. Um, so another thing you can use your uh, corn for, not only are you using the stalks to make your fertilizer for the ground, but you're going to use the corn cobs. We use the corn cobs every year for our tomato plants to go under our tomatoes. He uses them like a, a sponge. He he has a video. It's called uh, awesome, something awesome tomatoes. I don't forgot something about a secrets to growing secrets awesome. to growing awesome tomatoes. Yes, I think it's in there. He shows using the I corn show how cobs. To use that in one if, of I, our own. if I remember correctly, if not, we've got a video just on corn cobs for tomatoes. Plants. Yes. Can you d discuss the nixito whatever for corn nix? Optimization, whatever that is. I'm not. Not <laughs> on here. Because it, it's too lengthy. It, it takes too much of my time. I got too many questions going by. Um, maybe yeah. I'll do a video in the future about it when I do this uh, organic farming and stuff like that. We'll talk about it then. Yeah. So when we make these this corn, according to which screen we use. Yes. We can make me some grits. We can make grits. We can make cornmeal. We can make uh, flour, corn flour. The flour is what we, we can use grind. A lot of we here. can grind chicken feed. We can grind pig feed, corn or cow feed, all of that with. I got all the screens to do all that with. Yeah. And we won't be buying any corn in bags in town to uh, to run through it or anything like that. We will not run any kind of GMO corn or anything like that through it. It will only be the corn that we raise here at Deep South Homestead. Uh, Bethany's asking, do I tighten my jars tighter than finger tight when water bathing? Uh, she's scared of messing up. Uh, I go finger tight and then just a little bit past most of the time. Danny and I always have, and we've never had any problems. 
but as long as you just kind of tighten it, you should be good. It's not a rock, it's not crazy. You just don't want to over tighten, just saying. I saw Miss Josie said a while ago that she's planted her okra three times and it's just now only a foot tall. Wow. Uh, ours is like. Well, I, it took gosh, a little while. It took a long time for ours to ever do anything, but ours must be, what, 10 feet tall now or something? Other. I mean, it's getting way yeah, on up there. And I have uh, okra in my greenhouse. It isn't blooming yet, but it's getting ready, and it's probably two, two and a half feet tall, maybe a little around two feet tall. There is so much fixing to come down the pipe, guys. Over on Patreon, I just put up a video talking about what's fixing to start happening with the banking systems and stuff like that. We just got to, we got to, we got to start doing our own stuff. If we don't do our own stuff, we're going to be in trouble. I mean, I don't, I have said this for the last five years and I, I don't know how many people really are listening because we do videos sometimes about how to can and how to prepare and, and how to do all that kind of stuff. And it just seems like they just don't get no views. And I'm sitting back going, you know what? I'm getting, I'm getting tired of doing it because it's just, just like nobody's paying any attention. Well, people aren't thinking for themselves. Not saying y'all, because y'all may Mr. Be John said a deer ate all his okra. Oh, my goodness. Um, not saying y'all pay attention, but for the most part, it's like people don't really care to learn how to do stuff. They enjoy watching you do it. They'll sit and go, oh, that's fun, but they don't do it. And really, it's time now that you better be thinking for yourself Checking out everything. Don't take anybody's word for anything because, it, I mean, I swear it's gotten rough with misinformation, I guess you could say, on everything. So, yeah, this year we only planted about, uh, we didn't get to plant, but like six or eight rows of our corn, I think it was. We just didn't have the room this year. Next year we're going to make a little bit bigger spot. Gail says she can't comment on Patreon. Do you know why? Now, on Patreon, Gail, if you have, I don't know, some people sometimes sign Hands in on. on one account and then they have another account and they go in, it might let you watch because you're still under your own uh, account with two separate emails. If you have that happen, you have to go to the email that you signed up, I mean, or go to, I don't know how it works, somehow. Anyway, two emails or something, I don't mm -hmm. know, um, but... I, we we don't have any dealings with Patreon other than putting stuff up and answering questions. What meat grinder would you suggest that grinds bird's bones? <laughs> we don't grind any bones with our meat grinders. No. <laughs> I couldn't help you with that one because I don't know. I will not run a bone through my meat grinder. Vicky said her 91-year-old dad said, don't keep any more money in the bank than you can afford to lose. <laughs> I, that is a wise saying. As a matter of fact, over on Patreon, I talk a little bit about what's fixing to happen with these banks. And uh, it's, uh, let me just put it this way. Wanda and I keep most of our assets in tangible things. If you had to choose which animal to raise to, for the butcher and to, and it was your first, which would you pick and why? To raise for the butcher. Well, for a butcher, there's only going to be two animals you're going to take to a butcher. One's going to be a cow and one's going to be a pig. So you're not going to take any, or a sheep or a goat maybe, but uh, pigs are the easiest thing to raise. I mean, ours, they just lay around all day. I mean, and they, they eat up all the scraps. They eat up the, any scraps you have around the place and turn it into meat and profit. Where a cow is more finicky and it takes a lot longer well, it you takes a lot longer on a cow. Yeah, you have a long period Almost a two-year period, yeah. Yeah, so you would want, if you, it's, it would have to be a pig. And if you're going to do your own, I would say the easiest thing to do and process on your own is a rabbit. No, rabbits are very easy. That's the easiest. If you're going to raise something and process yeah. yourself, it's a rabbit. Chickens, to me, are horrible. I could do a rabbit so much easier. What should we do with retirement money? <laughs> I can't answer that one for you because I don't know anything, Matt. I can't. I don't know what uh, IRAs. Uh, I mean, I will say this: there is a big push right now for a new tax on IRAs. So just be careful if you've got an individual retirement account. They're looking for a new way to tax it. Let me put it that way. 
Y'all, uh, somebody's saying something about popcorn. They say cornmeal popcorn, niblet sweet corn, and I don't feed. I have popcorn, and I'm going to be doing a video soon. We, I've just these pears have just been kicking my butt. Y'all don't know how many pears I've had to can, and uh, so I am going to be doing popcorn soon and showing how, if my popcorn pops. <laughs> Gail said, "What I've been talking about has done happen to her multiple times. Has been only allowed a certain amount of money." I talk about this over on Patreon. I think Gail's over on Patreon with us. I think I've seen yeah. some comments she's made over there. Uh, I talk about what's going on and how that um, they're trying to get ready to uh, close accounts and stuff like that. People's banking accounts and why. Uh, let's see, yeah. Matthew. Thank you so much. Building my high tunnel raised beds on the perimeter. Uh, two tower gardens in the center. What do you think about white sand as a comfortable base on top of the weed block to minimize Critters. I would not put anything on top of the weed block because if it has any seeds in it at all, it will come up and the roots will grow through the weed block. I can tell you from experience. <laughs> I know I made the mistake of putting sand underneath my weed block, and when I go to roll something around on it, it makes it very difficult to pull. Yeah, uh, and two, we have sand like where our high tunnel is on the outside. We put weed barrier, and sand washes down on it. And weeds grow all up yep. in it. I have to weed it out all the time. Sand is like the easiest thing to for something uh, to grow in. Mitt Hall says, "How do you dispatch the rabbits? Pellet gun or snap the neck?" Now I just got a I got a stick about 12 inches long, about like the end, the end off of a shovel handle or something, and I just hold them by the back legs and take that stick and just tap them right behind the ears on the back of the head. You don't have to hit them very hard, and they'll just sit there and go to kicking. It doesn't kill them. It just stuns them, and then we uh, we go ahead and um, cut their throat and let them bleed out. Uh, it's a very painless death and uh, very humane. Yeah. How do I get rid of ribbon grass? Uh, we don't have ribbon grass here, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, Ashton is saying to buy supplements because they're about to be regulated as drugs. Stock up on vitamins and make sure they're organic or grow your own. Explain what a little about what you were told this week about. Okay, you I'm, may uh, not can say the words. Okay, I'm on, I'm on, I can say the words. I just can't. There's some words I can't say. I talked to uh, I talked to some people this week, uh, two different people, uh, about the new drug that's being used for um, pestilence 19. It's and, not a new drug. It's been no, it's not. Forever. It's a new drug used for that though. Yeah. This drug has been around since probably the 1970s or so. Uh, it's called ivermectin. Ivermectin, I talked to a, a person uh, just yesterday. The pharmacist said that, uh, well, I talked to a cattle, a person that owns a feed store first, and the person at the feed store told me that the, uh, the rep had been in that morning and told them that they were no longer going to be able to get the paste ivermectin uh, they would probably be continue to get the pour on for a little while longer, the noramectin or ivermectin, either one, and uh, because uh, they're going, the FDA has now taken control over the ivermectin, and they're no longer going to be able to give it out for animal use or anything like that. Uh, it's being turned over and given to pharmacies now. Uh, the pharmacist said that each pill of ivermectin that they give. You take a four pills a day for five days. It's $95 a pill. It ranges to be about a $2,000 treatment for the uh, Pestilence 19. Um, and that's what they're uh, using it for now. So they're not going to be allowing farmers to have it anymore for their animals for anything because people are, are taking it from the feed stores and using it themselves for Pestilence 19. So they, they found a way so to they, regulate They found a way to regulate it. The FDA has taken control over it now, classified it as a drug, and um, uh, the person at the farm uh, at the uh, feed store told me that people are coming in and getting the pour on ivermectin, and they're rubbing it around their ankles and on the bottoms of their feet uh, so that... Um, now, this is not medical information. Don't do this if you... Know. He's I, just, he's I'm just, saying, what people I'm just saying what what people have been doing here. They don't recommend. I don't recommend doing anything unless you talk to your doctor. But um, 
But but that's what they're doing right now. One thing they are fixing to do for animals, it won't be that you can't get it. No, you won't, it won't be that you can't. They're mixing it with you, something else. Uh, I talked to the other feed store. Yeah. The other feed store told me that they are still going to have ivermectin, but they're mixing it in with all the other wormers now um, so that it's not just ivermectin alone. If you uh, purchase it, you're purchasing a medication that's loaded with other stuff, not just pure ivermectin. Thank you, Wildings. I haven't heard anything yet on the regulation of vitamins, although I do believe it's probably going to happen. Uh, I have reason to believe. I just can't discuss it on here right now because I could get in trouble. Um, yeah, a lot of people were overdosing themselves and taking it when they didn't need to or taking too much. And that comes with anything when people are, are trying to self-medicate they don't pay attention to weight. They yes. don't pay attention to size. I mean, uh, they don't. They just don't. And they just take it because they think they can. And I did herbs. I started out with herbs years ago. And there's some herbs in minute doses are really good for you. But there's that same herb, if you take too much of it, could kill you. So you have to know what in any medicines that way. I yeah. reckon anything. You don't want to overdose to anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sheena says, so you get a five-way med with extra you-know-what in it. Yes. <laughs> Pretty much. It'll yeah. worm you and everything, won't it? Yeah. Which might not be a bad idea. <laughs> it's just crazy, guys. Um, the rules and regulations of going. Everything in the very near future is fixing to change. I, I don't I don't understand them. They got they got some weird rules. Um, you're welcome, Wil Wildings. Yeah, well, Wild Wildings, Wildings. The Wildings Landing. Yes, you're you're so welcome. Thank you so much. Okay, I wanted to show our pictures. If I can get back over, Danny's got me kind uh, well, of scrunched, and I have to move stuff, and it's going to get into our uh, that's chat. Good. That's okay. We, we we need to show a few pictures. You got pictures here of something. I don't know what. Okay. Oh, these are the uh, einkorn biscuits. Yes. Danny said they were a little dry. <laughs> they were a little bit, well, they were packy because it's the first time we've ever made it. It's a new kind of flour for us. Um, so I think that, um, I think it's going to be all right if we, once we kind of figure it out a little bit. Ms. Uh, Ms. Sharon's kind of helping with that. Yeah, so I made biscuits with the einkorn. I think on Sharon's video, I called it Ekron. Yeah. But it is iron corn. These are our pomegranates, guys. We have pomegranates hanging on our tree, or Ms. Wanda's tree, across on the other hill. And I'm telling you what, uh, pomegranates are also great for worming you. Uh, if you got parasites in your body or anything to that nature, uh, pomegranates are great parasite controls for the body. So, I will have some uh, soon. Hello, so Flutie Lick. Doesn't, doesn't get my stuff. Uh, this is where we're at now. We have started our new woodshed. Uh, I have some new metal brackets I bought to, uh, to build this woodshed out of. Miss Sharon came by the other day and took some pictures of it. Uh, we are working on our number two and number three year supply of firewood at this time. So we, we're getting there. Okay, that's the other pictures. All right, let me go up here. Oh, we went, I went, well, one and I went catfishing, uh, it was about two or three days ago. A couple of days. A couple of days ago, and I caught two catfish that were nice catfish, and this is what we ate for supper, was it last night? Yeah. Yeah, and for dinner today. Actually, yes. Those fish, y'all, let me, we'll talk about fish in a minute. This is the, uh, stir fry. Stir fry that I made yesterday. Sharon had brought us a turkey, and y'all, that was the biggest turkey I've ever seen in my life. It was huge. It'd make butterball sick. And uh, Danny sliced it up, and we put nine quart packs in the freezer. And then I took the bones and made bone broth and took all the meat off the bones. And we took the, these were the tenderloins, wasn't Yeah, uh, no, not tenderloins. <laughs> what, what, what? They were. <laughs> what are they called? Chicken tenders. Well, chicken tenders, whatever. Yeah, not tender well, turkey tenders. They were turkey tenders, yeah. He sliced it real thin, and we used 
sweet potatoes, the white sweet potatoes in this, and it was absolutely amazing. Y'all, if you've never tried white, white sweet potatoes in stir fry, oh my. We actually did the pink sweet potatoes tonight yeah. in stir fry. Uh, but, Louis Lick said if he was close, we was close to him, he could sure fix us up with firewood. I tell you what, uh, all we heat with is firewood during the winter time, and we have two two homes that we have to heat with it, and uh, it takes it takes a good bit of firewood, especially for this yeah. big house. Now the little little one doesn't take as much firewood, but the big house takes a lot of firewood to keep it heated. Yeah, if it gets very cold. What's with the volume tonight? Is it because I'm? Oh, hold on. Using supper food. and dinner. Do y'all have lunch? Lunch is in the middle of the day. Well, supper is what we have. Supper. Tonight. You have to understand. Supper goes all the way back to the sixteen to seventeen and eighteen hundreds. But dinner uh, for us is lunch time. Dinner for us is what most people call lunch because back in the seventeen eighteen hundreds, people did not eat before they went to bed. They supped. They made like a broth and stuff like that, and they sat in their beds, and they supped. And that's where we got the word supper from. Uh, uh, that's If you go back and study the 1800s and the 1700s, you'll find out that's where we get the word supper. Dinner came into being the late last meal of the day from the city people who uh, were going out for dinner because it was what the ritzy people did. It was what the, the, the well-off people did. They called it dinner. We but, know it's always been it's dinner a, for me at uh, lunchtime. Yeah, well, anytime during the day, it's called dinner and it's supper at night. But you'll hear me occasionally say something about lunch, which means middle of the day. But I grew up, it was dinner. Dinner yeah. time was at lunch. At church, dinner was after church. Yeah, it was after, after church, lunch. you went home for dinner. Lunch you had to push her over for dinner. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Now, if you were going to have somebody over at night, you would have supper. Come over and have supper with yeah. us. Yeah. After uh, church, everybody says we're having supper after church tonight. Uh, the Lord's Supper was held at night. You know, so I mean, it's all at night. Yeah. Wonder when I called you Danny's helper, I was referring to helpmate. Please don't be upset. Oh, I get that. Oh, we, we understand. No, I don't uh, ever get out. Y'all ain't got to worry about me being politically correct about a whole lot. Uh, uh, do we bow hunt? If so, what recommendations do you have for a compound bow setup? Alpha Hoss, I've killed 73 deer with a compound bow. Uh, I don't hunt with a compound bow anymore because I've torn my rotator cup in my right arm. I now use a crossbow that's got a crank on it. Um... I still, the only thing I still have is my, I don't know anything about these new bows. My last bow I bought was so many years ago as a Hoyt Easton Spectra 5000, uh, and it still works perfect, uh, so I haven't had a need to buy another one, but I know now they have some mighty fine compound bows on the market. You know, when I went to looking for crossbows, I was like, whoa. They got some expensive compound bows out there, and they are awesome looking. And they shoot a lot faster than my Hoyt does. Gail's right. If she wonders when they would be, uh, forbid wood burning stoves, it's, it's coming. It's in the New Green Deal, which is actually the New Green Deal. Some of it, not all of it, is in the new infrastructure bill that they just passed. As a matter of fact, right now, there's places in the United States, specifically in California, where it's against the law to use a wood-burning stove. Um, and, I, and I look for them to, at some point, say that the emission from a wood-burning stove, if you don't have a catalyst one, is you're going to have to just do away with it, or they'll fine you. I probably will be fined. I'll just go ahead and say <laughs> it. Texas is breakfast, dinner, and supper. Tennessee, I mean... Uh, yeah. Allison put up our bow hunting video. I forgot all about that. We killed a deer that night. Yes. Not not because Wanda was still. Okay, uh, do you know what sandwich spread is? If so, have you ever canned some? No, I we've haven't. We've never not. canned any sandwich spread. I know what it is, but I don't think we've never canned it. No, I haven't. Um, that That's just, uh, in Scotland, the evening meal is called having tea. Uh, yeah, and the little pinky's extended. 
<laughs> when I, People used to get on to me all the time because I was drinking. I always extended. Like, so, I are, you, are you used it. to having tea? Uh, I, I, I do it. I mean, you'll, you'll notice me when you see me drink my water on here or something. I'm like... It's not that it goes way up, but it is. It always is out. It is, it is yeah. kind of out. It's weird. It is It is out, yeah. Um, I love deer meat now. I'll tell you that. Yeah, we do. We love deer meat. We probably will take one if the bone sauce don't keep them. If the bone sauce don't keep them away too long, we'll, we'll try to take one. We can't kill in the front because we have neighbors everywhere around here. But behind us, we have 7,000 acres. Sheena so. said, I'm lying if I didn't say I'm a little bit afraid of what's coming. Sheena, the Bible actually tells us that in the latter days of this age, men's hearts will fail them for fear. And we've got to get out of this fear thing. Fear is not from God. Fear is from the devil. And we've got to learn just that... be prepared. And just be, be prepared and have the knowledge. And whenever something happens, I mean, it is what it is. We're not going to be able to change it. It's part of the plan that uh, has been set for the latter days of this age. Um... So, yeah. Anne says, have you canned bone broth before? Matter of fact, we did some this week. Uh, I did turkey. Turkey. You did turkey bone broth. Yeah. As a matter of fact, don't buy the bone broth in the stores, guys. The bone broth in the store, even if it says organic, it's just flavored water with artificial flavors. There's no real bone sauce in it. I mean, bone sauce. No real bone <laughs> broth in it. I, 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 I I'm think sorry, about Billy. Billy's going to get me saying bone sauce on everything now. but It's Billy's fault. Yeah, it's all Billy's fault. Um <laughs> Michelle's crap. We, <laughs> we actually have some videos out about how we can uh, bone bone broth. Let me yes. say that. I didn't um, make one yesterday when I or day before whenever I did that. I was just in a hurry. I had several things going and when I have a lot going on, I don't can everything. I mean I don't video everything. Uh, Brooke says, Why are they not issuing deer license? My husband tried today and said they're not issuing them at this time. I don't know. Uh I don't ever buy a hunting license. I just shoot the deer because I want to shoot them. But they're on, uh, my, they're on my property. I don't worry about it. Uh, I don't ever go off of my land hunting anymore, so I don't really worry about it. Uh, Danny, would a high tunnel work in Middle Florida? A high tunnel should work anywhere. As a matter of fact, uh, the only thing you'd have to worry about would be hurricanes like we do. But um, you follow my instructions on how I built mine. It, mine stood 100 mile an hour winds last year without any problems. We'll see this year if we have any. If we have another one this year, we'll just have to see the how it does. plastic is iffy, you know, but so far it's done really well. And we've had several good storms with pretty good winds, so. Yeah. You got oh. I am a me says you have bone sauce on the brain. Yeah, I got there's our bone broth video. Ms. Allison put it up. I knew we had one. Um, my, my leg is going to sleep. They said, uh, Sheena says, they said the deer is carrying the you-know-what. Oh, uh, the... Um, what is, uh, the... She's got that little... I can't see what that that's is. That's like a, a virus. Like a virus, okay. The deer They're are testing, testing for, for C. C, according to WLNF, Wildlife and Fisheries. Wow. So if the deer are carrying uh, pestilence 19, then we will what all be in. What else is carrying it? Yeah, if it is, they put it in it. I'll say that. They, they put it in it. Can you save sweet potato slips over winter? No, not the slips. You can't. You can save well, the sweet potatoes, but you can't save the slips over winter. Yeah, they'd just be, if you had yeah, them I in mean, pots in, in your house, they'd just be growing they'd potatoes. They'd just be growing potatoes if you kept them in, a, in, you know. Which you could take the potato and replant and make more slips in the spring. I mean, it would be a circle, but they're saying it's tested positive. Wow. Wow, well, um, I haven't heard anything about that. I could call and find out, though, because I know some game wardens. Um... We do can deer meat. I have deer, yes. rabbit, turkey, chicken, and pork. I've got some pork sausage and some ham all canned. A little of everything. I will look into this. Now, I know about the chronic wasting disease, the CWD. And As a matter of fact, um, Cuz is supposed to be back. I'll talk to Cuz because he's with Mossy Oak, which I've got Mossy Oak's hat on tonight. 
Uh, I will talk to him and see what he says because they're all up in the, the deer hunting stuff. Yeah, you know see I mean? what's going on, at least in Mississippi. Now, I don't First, know you got to see, the IMME says, see who's testing the deer. Now, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Because if they're testing it, they'll make it say anything they want to say. Yeah. All, uh, they're going to have to test all animals need to be affected and the juice added. Did you ever make homemade potato chips? Yes. Yes, we made homemade potato chips several times, and I actually really like them. <laughs> yeah, we made those uh, when when our potatoes were fresh out of the ground. Yeah. Uh, canned pork is really good. I've got some ham that uh, we there was no way we would eat that big old ham. Yeah. And uh, Danny helped me, and we sliced it up into cubes about yay big, and I packed it in jars and. Uh, I uh, when you uh, wonder, do you can turkey cold packed or hot packed? Mine is all, always raw already, pack. Uh, cooked. I already have it cooked. Oh, you do cook yours, don't you? Because we pull the meat off the bones yeah. and all that stuff. Yes, hers is cooked. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes. We went ahead and uh, took the bone and boiled it for a while, and then we picked all the meat off. And when I got through, I put that meat over in a jar. Then I poured broth in it, and then. I pressure canned it for 75 <laughs> minutes because I did pint. As a matter of fact, the chronic wasting disease, somebody just mentioned it, and I was going to say this, but I didn't know if I should, but chronic wasting disease was created by the government. Of course. Um, Don't they always? Yes, they they put this stuff out into the <laughs> wildlife. Um you mean you don't have clinics for the deer coming in to get tested? <laughs> Give them time. Give them time. Okay, now Shane Abbott said, I do deer breeding for a living. Only thing we're testing for right now in Texas is a chronic wasting disease. Yeah. And they don't want you hunting if they know it's in the area. That, that well, they're trying to stop us from being able to supply meat for ourselves. Yeah, but they do. There's areas that they know it's in. Um, eighty percent of the Michigan deer have tested positive. Wow, that's huge. Uh, well, actually, um, uh, see the whole truth. Uh, Plum Island has been closed down. They're now moving Plum Island out the other side of Kansas City. They're going to start a new. Uh, how should I say this? Uh, they're going to start a new place out there i'm just I'm trying to choose my words to uh, for uh for the new disease uh i, I can't I, I just gotta watch my words but anyway they're gonna move plum island out to the other side of kansas city uh i do not have any squirrel in jars i really don't i did have some rabbit but it was our rabbit that we yeah. we raised and true lyme disease came from plum island too whether y'all know that or not the deer are social distancing. They're social distancing here. They're staying in the road. Yeah. They're not coming into the fields no more. Uh, it's rained a couple of nights. I hadn't added anything. I'm just hoping that what's on the wood yeah. is still good because Billy said it's supposed to last a while. So we're going to see. Um, we're not going to start our cookie. That's one thing about it. We're not going to start. We're going to do our best. Uh, we'll go out in the wild and pull up stuff out of the woods to eat if we have to. Yes, we have plenty of weeds. And the problem is, so many people that live inside the cities are going to starve. I mean, that's the sad part about it. Alpha Hall said, contact Blue Eddy. They are giving owners of the AC200P and the AC200 a new cable for free that will allow you to add external batteries to your units. Wow. Oh, wow. We may have to do that then. That would be nice because you talked about that. Yeah. And seeing if we could do that, that would be good. Uh, yeah. Allison says she lives right next to P. Island. I assure you, it is not currently closed. I have seen the ferry going back and forth. Oh, uh, they're, they're saying that it's been, well, it may not be closed right at the moment, but they're going to close it because they're moving it out to Kansas out there. As a matter of fact, we have some friends that live out there that's kind of, not they don't live right there, but live close to it. It's kind of freaking out because they're moving it out there and they're saying now that's all we need is to have all this stuff around us now you know um, I like Kim says the only thing we test for deer for is to see if we have enough jars to put them in <laughs> 
the plan is to move yes and build a luxury hotel wow just ask the deer for their vax passport yep which is i've heard things today about the uh pestilence 19 uh card and the jab that you have to have that's just blowing my mind i'm like really you know i don't believe it's the mark of the beast but i tell you what it is so freaking close to the mark of the beast uh, especially when you talk to people in other countries, uh, it's they're using Jan on here. Jan like, on here knows what I'm talking about. They're using it like they're using it like a forerunner, a forerunner of the mark of the beast. Because I'm telling you, they're not letting people do anything. You can't buy nothing. You can't go in a store. New Orleans. Oh, I watched a thing on New Orleans today. You can't go in a gym. You can't go in a restaurant. You can't go in a bar. You can't go nowhere. If you don't have that thing that says you have been either tested within so many hours or you've been jabbed and have a card stating you've been jabbed, you cannot, uh, you cannot get in. They won't allow it. Chris, we did plant red rippers in my high tunnel and they are just now getting runners on them and I'm hoping we'll be blooming within the next week or so. We'll see. So we did plant some red rippers. Jan says, if you don't have it, you don't have a job. And see, that's what I'm talking about. People say, oh, we never take the mark of the beast. Well, why did you take the, you know what, in the arm? Did they scare you? Or did they tell you, oh, you're not going to have a job? So and you yet you say you wouldn't take the mark of the beast? What if the mark of the beast? They looked at you and said, well, you can't work no more. You can't go in a grocery store. You can't buy anything. Well, I'm going to starve to death. What about my kids? I better take the mark. I mean, that's, what, that's how people are looking at it. And I'm telling you, it may not be the mark, but it is the freaking forerunner of it. Okay. we got to get off of that. Um, what else? Y'all find us another topic. Uh, Nadia says, please pray for the her church family. I think she said there's 22 in her church. 19 of them got it because someone came in sick. If you're sick, stay home. If yeah. you've been exposed, stay home. Please. That's just common courtesy. I mean, yeah. to me, and if you live with somebody that's been exposed, stay home. Yeah. <laughs> that, I just don't get this double standard. I had a girl on Facebook. She had two sons. And both of them started school a couple of weeks ago. And within the first week, one of them was exposed to to it at school so he got sent home and said quarantine him two weeks she said so i keep my other son home too because we live in the same house and they said no you have to send that son to school every day so he came home was exposed to the other kid and went back to school every day and she's going it don't make sense <laughs> not at all how are the pigs doing them things have already gained like 10 pounds since we got them they are a ball of energy. They are running. Uh, when they hear that uh, ranger coming up that hill, son, boy, they run up to that fence, and they're standing there, their ears all poked up. And, I mean, they are loving it. They're, uh, they're growing like crazy. Yeah. Um, Denise, uh, 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 D.C. Stewart said, I sent the link about the deer. Okay. Uh, I also need to show... Uh, we said we got some gifts this week. I, I Puzzles. Got, we got some nice. I love this puzzle here. Now this is probably the one I'll I enjoy. I gotta find a name. I guess I stuck it somewhere. Uh, uh, where am I at? There's one that got it. I didn't Elvira get. Wolf. Elvira Wolf sent us a a variety a variety of puzzles and. And this is what you do when you when you get to be like us. Oh, this one I like. I love the dog sitting there reading the newspaper. That's kind of cool. And then this is the other one. That uh, I love the scenes on these. Now, They're yeah, Miss Elvira, that was nice because if we're stuck inside and we have to, uh, they lock us down, which doesn't affect me and Wanda that much anyway. Because we don't. <laughs> we stay home anyway. We stay home anyhow. But we don't do much anyway. But this is the way I used to pass time, and this way my kids. And I had one son, my oldest son. He was in his late 20s, and uh, he would go to town and buy five puzzles 
I mean, even though him, him, his wife, and his kids would sit there all night and put these puzzles together, if they went to bed, he stayed up and put puzzles together. He really had a hundred puzzles in his house that he wow. put together. He loved them. Um, Wanda, have you ever had any issues canning butter? I've done it. Uh, the more research I do, it's so controversial. We canned a lot of butter. Uh, we kept it for quite some time. I have some now. We still have um, some canned from what years ago. I usually can some a year, and then I keep it less than two years. I yeah. try to try to use it within a two-year period. A lot of people say five years, but I try not to go five years. Um, I do just enough to have extra, and then when I want butter, I go in there and get a jar. And within the two years, I've used it. But every year I try to do one batch, which is about 12, 15 jars. I can't remember exactly because I, I do 9 to 10 pounds of butter. And uh, I try to do at least one of those a year and then use it. What is your favorite scripture? James chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted of evil, neither tempted of any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Uh, this is something that I've lived by for years. We keep saying, well, the, you know, the Lord's tempting me, but the Lord doesn't tempt anybody. You know, so we can't blame anything on God. Okay, now who? Donald. Mr. Donald, he sent us some uh, hickory cane corn. Now, it's out in my freezer right there. I want to make sure I do not lose that. And then he sent us some garrison watermelon seeds here. So we'll be keeping them and planting them. Uh, watermelons is extremely good for you. Very alkalinizing for the body. Helps with the stomach and it's everything. It's very good for intestinal and stomach issues. Okay. Good for kidney cleansing. Name again. Y'all have to look we because to, Well, we I get so much look. stuff from different people. We want to make sure we don't say something and wrong. And Mr. John, thank you. We did get yes, your... Yes, Mr. John that Henderson. That is life-saving. We, we did get your package today and it yesterday. was... Or yesterday. It was a very... Thoughtful. Let me put it that way. I'm not going to say what was in it, but it was very thoughtful. Uh, U.S. Army veteran Gary. Mr. Gary sent us uh, uh, an assortment of hats. Now, I've been wearing this one. This one has been it's wearing that, that one. Um, thing on the back, adjustable for women, and uh, I've been having this one. Got on another one way. here, and another one, and one more, and one more like this. Let me get it right. I'm dyslexic on this thing. Everything's backwards. <laughs> uh, so thank you for that. Yes, thank you so much. Um, like I said, I've been wearing mine today. Ms. Wanda's been wearing hers all day um, today. Yeah. I think I forgot to mention this. Um, Sharon Lynn Fairley sent this book, Bubbling Up, Release from, release from Within. Within. And this is uh, little short stories, uh, kind of poems that she wrote. And uh, I've done been reading on those when I was editing earlier and had a minute I was reading on those. Thank you, Sharon. Yes, uh, uh, we get a lot of thoughtful gifts from a lot of different people. And if we forget to mention yours, I'm so sorry because we... I, I, I will we, put it up and forgot to bring it in here. So yeah. I try to not put anything up till we've showed it. But we bring I, it into the office and set it around the desk here. That way when it comes time for our live stream, <laughs> at least it's here. When you get to be our age... Some things just right out. If I put it up, it goes away and we forget, you know, because we get things off and on. And if it's something that I really can use right at that moment, I go put it up where I need it and uh, start using it and I forget to talk about it. So if if you send us something and you don't think we got it, just ask. Just ask. Blue Star says, one day I use your tomato sauce candy video tonight. night made six pints turned out beautiful. So thank you so much. You're welcome. I have a couple of videos I'm going to be making soon uh, on, uh, where's that book at? It's uh, behind you somewhere. Oh, this old book here? Yeah. Y'all, I love books, but let me tell y'all, this is the Home Comfort Cookbook. It was sent to me last year or the year before, I don't know. I've had it a, at least a year, and uh, or pretty close to a year. I like just reading because guess how old this book is? I bet none of you can mm -hmm. guess how old this book is. Go for it. Let's see if anybody can guess. Somebody may know how old it is. 
They, if it would be the one that sent it. It would have to be the one that sent it, but I mean, <laughs> did Allison send it? I can't remember. Allison, did you send this book? <laughs> Don't ask me. I forget to write who's, who sent it. I'm going to start writing people's names in the front that sent it. Allison may have. Amy Svob says 1964. Not yet. Not Real Farm says 45 years. Uh, Marilyn, Marilyn says, says 40. in the 40s. It's, Jan says 1929. Uh, Arizona Online says 50 years ago, 68 years old, 100, 30 years, 1900. It was 1940. This one here says 1938. Okay. okay, this was done in 1946. 1946. Y'all, it is going on, what, 80 years? It's not quite 80. 75. It's 75 years yeah. old. And I love it. There's a recipe for yellow pear preserves we're going to talk about. It talks about pectin. We're going to do some talking talk about how to make your own homemade pectin and save it. And, and believe it. How to check fruit and, for and pectin. And how to check fruit for pectin. All that kind of stuff is in there. Interesting things that we need to know uh, if everything goes bad. My daughter popped in. Hello. Hello, girl. Good to see you. Um... Yeah, and it, it has some really good recipes in there. So I'm, I'm going to talk about some of them and if I find time. I just ain't got there yet. Danny, is the Backwoods Magazine worth getting? I actually have the Backwoods Magazine. Uh, I actually read them from time to time. Uh, I think they're worth it. Uh, Danny, how's the worm composting been going? It's going great because we... Wanda and I, uh, every time we get ready to go fishing, we just go to the worm bin, get some big old worms out, and go fishing. Now, it's not the composting worms, but it's the large worms. No, the, compost the composting worms are, are Cadillacing. You've done out of, what, two or three bins? I'm on my third... Tray? Second tray. I'm still on my second. You had not added third one? Uh... I thought you had. I'm on the third one. Yes, I am. I'm on the third yeah, tray. We, 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 we forgot to get any... Uh, Par it's not Paralyte. No. Anyway. Stuff for the worms, anyway. <laughs> the worms need food. Yeah, the worm food stuff. Um, Wartime Farms from Britain. Yes, Danny. I Carolina watch those knows. videos on, uh, on on YouTube lots of times. I love watching the wartime videos. I've learned a lot from them. I actually have um, an old cookbook that Ron Foster sent me. It's over... No, it ain't over at the cabin. Where is it? That's the one I got at the cabins one, Goldie sent me. The one Ron sent me is in my uh, cabinet in there. I was sitting flipping through that one. Y'all, y'all don't know. The, we are so lost. The recipes you look at now in your cookbooks, it's a can of this, a box of that. You got to have something from the store. A pinch of this, a dash of that. That's in the old cookbook. Yeah, that's what I'm talking the about. new cookbooks, you... You have to go to the store to buy every item. The old cookbooks were things that you had on hand. Yeah. And when I did my cookbook, I had somebody send me a message and say, I don't understand why all your recipes are so close and similar to the same thing. And I'm like, because that's what I have on hand. I have the same ingredients. I just have to figure out how to make something different with them, you know. And that's what they did back then. Uh, Carrie says they've been getting a whole tray of worm castings per month. They are the carriers. Yeah, they make. They are. Uh, if I if I put as much, we've been feeding a lot of our scraps to the pigs now, so my worms don't get as much as they used to get. So how long does it take um, for crepe myrtles to start rooting? <laughs> depends on which variety you get. Some of them's on the invasive species list. As a matter of fact, the they'll one, root like we got them suckers coming up everywhere here, and I mean they just take over. So it shouldn't take long. Yeah. Um, uh, Danny, have you ever raised Texas Shelley's Do You Like Soup Beans? Uh, I don't think I have. I've never tried those. Uh, I'm hoping this year, Flutie Lick gave us some greasy beans a couple of years ago. I'm hoping this year uh, to be able to get those greasy beans in the ground and get some seeds from them. So I, um, they'll just be strictly for seed the first year, but uh, I'm hoping to do that. Uh, somebody's asking about will calendula cream help with the rash for their daughter? 
I'm not familiar. I mean, I know what calendula is, but I couldn't tell you on that. Uh, usually, I use something different for that when my kids were little. And I'm not sure how old your kid is and things like that, so I can't give advice. Danny, I need to know more with my sweet potatoes. Should they be growing vines like I've seen in your videos? Yes, uh, sweet potatoes, depending on what variety you got. Now, if you got the... Uh, there's some that don't. The Georgia Jets or something like that, made for like up north or something. They don't grow a lot of vines. Uh, they put most of their uh, growth into the root system rather than into vines. And y'all, I'm almost out of cookbooks. I think I have, how many's behind you? One, two, three, four. I got about five or six left. Once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not, um... I don't know if I'll order any more right now with things the way they are. It takes about a month to get them. And with, I just don't know if I'm going to order any right now. So when these are gone, that's probably it. Amy wants to know how's our worms doing. They're doing great, Amy. We have two different types of worms. We have the large fishing worms and we have the composting worms. Both of them are doing fantastic. Yeah. The, uh, have we ever made leather britches? No, I really hadn't. Um, never had a, a need or a desire to. I, I know what they are, I just never have done it. Uh, on the Calendula, Jim, Jim and I Homestead uh, says it works great on her grandson. So, um, Miss Slippy sent me some cream. Was that Calendula? Don't ask me because I can't remember names right now. Gemini Homestead just got noticed. Southampton's gas stations are out of fuel. That's because that storm's coming in there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the family cookbooks are a treasure. I couldn't agree more. Yes, all, I, all kinds of older cookbooks. Danny has a supply because his past wife, previous wife that passed away, she collected cookbooks. And I gave I gave her son two. Three, three giant plastic totes of old cookbooks when I gave him. And he him. kept? I kept. A, 25 or 30. A, yeah, at least 25 or 30 of them. She collected cookbooks now. So I have a supply of We are way over our time. <laughs> oh, are we? Um, so Jim and I did send me some calendula. That, I was thinking, but I didn't want to say that. Yeah, the yes. I Am Of Me said, do y'all grow wormwood on your property? I used to have wormwood here. And the problem is I had it close to my fence and my pregnant goats reached through the fence and ate the wormwood off and it mummified all their babies in them and they, didn't, they were born mummified and dead. So I, uh, I did away with it when me and Wanda got married. Yeah. I, I just got rid of it. If you have it, do not have it near where animals can yeah, get Yeah, just it. don't have it near where anything can get to it. Um... All right, so if y'all have prayer requests, yeah. um, I do have one, uh, my friend Tammy Hass, um, we've asked for prayer before, she's been going through cancer, she has leukemia, she is not doing well, she started her treatments again today or yesterday, and um, we just want to keep her in prayers, and um, trying to think, my friend Terry, yeah. her mother-in-law passed away, and her mother-in-law miss sylvia was very instrumental in me getting back in church because when i was a young mother with two kids and didn't have a way to go she would come by when they were having revival pick me up and take me to church with her and so um i just uh, thought a lot of miss sylvia she she was a very special lady to me many years ago so we want to remember that family see people with Lyme disease recovering from it, people with uh, pestilence 19, still weak from that. Uh, let's see here. The people pray in that, Afghanistan. Pray for uh, people to accept their exam, Is Amy, uh, people from Afghanistan. Um, how did we meet? Christian, Christian Mangle. <laughs> it's... It's, it's part a of our story. We have, if you go back and watch our story on, uh, go to Empty Hammocks channel. And watch our story. And you and I talk in detail on one of your porch times. On one of our porch times, yeah. Look for Danny and Wanda's story and it'll pop up. Yeah. Type in Danny and Wanda's story. Yeah. Jesus says her sister-in-law. Uh, Lupus. Um, 
Ms. Lippy has made the calendula salve for her first, I think. Uh, a nurse that had to leave 23-year nursing career. Um, My mother, she just turned 83. Uh, Wiggins lost a sweet man this week, Mr. Bo Tanner. Do you know him? Oh, yeah. Bo lives right up the road from us. He don't no more. Well, he did. That's who passed away this week. I, I thought I'd seen somebody in the... Um, online on that and I just I don't know people here so it's hard for me yeah to Mr. Bow lived you know up there at Red Creek where you see the house up off on the stilts it's um, right there always where we can go in there behind where we looked at the land at back in there uh, he lives right up from there okay uh, pray for my husband he has suffered from anxiety depression and diabetes combination is not good if he has anxiety and depression, he's probably very deficient in vitamin D and vitamin D3. I will tell you that. Uh, a doctor won't tell you that, but I can almost promise you that's what it is. Ashton says they're limiting her mom's insulin. She's type 1 diabetic. Uh, Medicaid won't allow. As precious insurance and it's double, double in price. price. See, that's fixing to be one of the That's going to be things. another big issue, yes. Is you can't get the meds or they're going to want to substitute Man. the meds you've been taking and they won't work as well. I mean, I feel for people that are on medication. Danny and I both don't take we anything. We don't take anything. I mean, we probably should. My heart stops and starts all He's day. Been and having a lot I've of had issues. a lot of heart issues this week. So I want y'all to And I refuse too. to go to a doctor because all they do is use you for a guinea pig. If I, if I pass, I just pass. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, so um, he's had a lot of issues this week. So just keep him in your prayers. And uh, uh, let's see. And Amy said, Brother David Graham, he's um, going, going back, back to, to Florida, Florida for tests, tests and checkups on his cancer. Uh, my friend's mom. mom has the monster. We pray that we'll be the ones who takes them off at night now. And Father, we thank you because uh, as the psalmist said, no one can praise you out of the grave. So, oh Lord, deliver us from all the evil that's around us now. And preserve our lives from death, Father, because no one can preserve you from the uh, can uh, can worship you from the grave. And and Father, that's the way we look at life. And we like to look at it like the Apostle Paul said: to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. But if I should live, I live my life for Christ. And Father, that's the way we look at it. And thank you so much for being so good to us uh, this past week. You know, we suffered some issues with our heart this week, Father, but. We was able to work through it, and we look online tonight here. Got a lot of people here tonight that's got a lot of physical issues, uh, people having problem with the uh, uh, getting over the pestilence 19, and some of the people are still weak, some of them's got Lyme disease. I mean, probably people just mentioning lupus and all kinds of cancers, and uh, our friends has got cancer, Lord, and I mean, just... People everywhere has all types of illnesses, the anxieties, the depressions, the diabetes. Lord, all these things we call out by name tonight because they're all things that uh, the devourer has put into motion to destroy our physical bodies, Father. And, and we pray for victory over them all, Lord. We pray for healing from them. In the name of Christ, we pray that we'll be healed from all these physical issues and mental issues, Lord. Father, for those that didn't get the you-know-what and the you-know-where, uh, that can't have a job now because of it, uh, we pray for them that they'll be able to find some sort of financial uh, resource to be able to help them get through these hard times. And Lord, I just pray for each and every one of them now. Uh, I pray for us physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, Lord, all these areas. I just lift us up, Father, and ask that you bless us. And I cry out to heaven tonight, that you would grant each and every one of us the blessings of obedience, the fruits of the Spirit, for financial resources above and beyond our means, Lord, so that we're able to afford the things we need uh, before the time gets too short for us, Father. Open our eyes, give us eyes to see and ears to hear, Father. With all that's going on around us, they're just, Father, they're just hoarding us on in. They're corralling us up, trying to get us to a point where they can control us now in every aspect of our lives. And Father, give us the wisdom we need 
to be able to see these things coming and have the understanding and the knowledge to know what to do and when to do it, Lord, to stay a, a, ahead of them. As you said in Scripture, uh, come out from among them and be ye separate. Um, and Lord, that's what we're trying to do. We're doing our best to come out from among this evil system uh, that's being set up all around us and not be a part of it. Give us the ability to do that, Father. And I pray earnestly for this. And, and I want to say thank you for all that you've done for us. We've, many times we always ask and we forget to praise the Lord. And tonight I want to praise you, Father, for being so good to so many of us and helping us through these hard times and giving us the wisdom and knowledge that you have given us. And now we pray for the strength and the help to continue on, Father. And for those who made the horrible mistake of taking the you-know-what in the arm, Father, I pray for their health because, Lord, it looks like in the near future they'll begin to have health issues. And, and tonight we pray for their health issues and pray ahead of time that, Lord, that you'll spare their lives and, um, and just be kind and gentle to them, Lord, um, for having, uh, having done this now. So thank you for loving us and thank you for appreciating us tonight. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, and we'll give you the honor and the glory and the praise for everything. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. My eyes now. I'm because I'm so sleepy. Ah. So, uh, oh, hide behind us saying that some of the stores are running low of goods. I did see that, that there was uh, somebody posted on Walmart that they were in a, uh, somebody posted that they were in a Walmart and there was real low supplies and this was back two or three days ago and they said that the trucks hadn't been there in a few days. So y'all, that may be something because truckers are well, not going to, uh, they get we, sick too. We talked about this on Patreon about there being a disruption in the supply line again. I mean, yeah. this is one of the things, you know. Yeah. Oh, I get very sleepy now. Yeah, this one is going to go to sleep on me, I'm afraid. Yeah, not long. They're saying Sam's and everything it has stuff. Yeah, it's in certain states um, because some of the truckers have the virus and they're not getting their loads where they need to. And even like our post office, um, they said for the last few weeks, somebody, one or two of them has been out every week for a while. That has been going through both our post office. So things, ours done pretty good, but FedEx was slow. It took two extra it took days. Two extra days with FedEx, FedEx to get our, to get our um, packages in. Yeah. So if you don't get your packages on time or the stores, it's, it's, the supply chain it's not that it's not a not available yeah it's, the, it's not there where you need it it'll be there in, in the future um we want to pray for those in the path of the storm up north because really and truly the guys uh the people up there are not used to having these kind of things on a regular basis and um and, and they are they're, they're gonna really take it kind of hard yeah all right so we got to um Get off here and... Yeah, don't... I agree with them. Don't quit your job. Make them fire you. Don't sign nothing. Yeah. Come to work. Show up. Do your job. That's it. Because I, I made the mistake one time of quitting. And I shouldn't have. <laughs> I regret yeah. that now. But God had better things in mind. Yes. 